I'm gonna get snobby here uh, because I'm a bike snob. What the hell? It's part of my job. Let's talk about five mountain bikes I'm looking forward to riding in 2023. My first bike, which is actually two bikes. So I lied, not five bikes, it's actually six bikes, but these bikes you can kind of lump together. You'll see why when I start talking about them. Think of it as a uh, free bike from me to you. Chromex Darko and Reeb's SST. Now, the reason I'm putting these together is they're both steel, full suspension bikes with 120 mils rear travel and built with a little bit, uh, they're over four. The Darko runs a 150 fork, the Reeb somewhere in there, 140, 150. 120 rear travel, a little bit different in that the Darko is a uh, four bar FSR style, whereas the Reeb is a flex pivot rear end. They both have a rocker link, vertical shock, pretty aggressive geometry on both. Shorter travel bikes, but not to be lightweight, not built for cross country riding. These things are built for pretty aggressive riding, but with a little less travel, you're gonna get a little bit more trail feel, a little bit more pop, a little bit quicker feeling bike, a little bit more snap. They're made for going fast, riding hard, hitting big jumps, uh, rolling down some steep trails, but with just less travel. Not everyone likes that. You know, a lot of people, when they want a bike for bigger terrain, they want more travel. Totally understandable. I guess you could say that it demands a little bit more of the rider because you gotta be a little bit more precise when you don't have all that extra travel to bail you out. But I think it makes them, um, the bikes really engaging to ride. Uh, longer travel bikes, I often feel, just feel kind of mushy and squishy. Maybe because I started riding mountain bikes in 1986 and everything was 26 inch wheels and rigid and I just got used to like feeling the trail and feeling the bike and feeling every little thing. Really looking forward to riding those bikes. Uh, and you know, steel is pretty rad. And because steel is so damn stiff, it's actually a pretty good material for building a full suspension bike. So that's number one and two, five and six. The next bike I wanna talk about is the Ministry Psalm. This one's an interesting bike. Uh, this is being developed by a guy named Chris Curry. Chris Curry is formerly a Speed Goat, a pretty influential mail order brand back in the day, or the way you might know him is the 3VO suspension design used by Jameis. He's kind of a one-man operation and starting out with the, uh, this building this ministry psalm. It's a CNC machine frame that's glued together, uh, kind of like some of the poles. With his 3VO suspension, it's in that 150 category. He's got a neat adjustable reach system, kind of like Gorilla Gravity, uh, a little chip that you can kind of swap to change the reach fore aft. Adjustable chain stays as well. So some tuning options built in. He's only building one size now, he's starting out. We'll see where he goes with this. But uh, curious to ride that. The 3VO suspension I've tried on the Jameis has been impressive. Nice riding suspension, good anti-squat properties and good you know, bump control, nice, nice balance of those things. You know, and then this kind of like aircraft style uh, machine frame glued together, bonded together. Just a really different bike between the construction and the suspension, which isn't, you know, super common out there. Really looking forward to seeing where that goes and hopefully I can get a ride on that sometime this year. This next bike is a secret bike, but not so secret. So I was at Crankworks this year for the EWS and I'm walking around the pits trying to see stuff, Snoop, and I got came across Mitch Rapolato's mechanic. Uh, Mitch rides for Cannondale. Mostly he is on the Jekyll high pivot bike, but I kind of wandered by the booth and I'm like, that, doesn't look, A, it's not a Jekyll because it's not high pivot. B, it's definitely not anything else I've seen from Cannondale, but it was very finished looking, very dialed. It was, you know, carbon. It was not like some cobbly, you know, prototype monstrosity that you so often see. And as far as I can tell, you know, uh, Mitch's mechanic was kind of like, go away. Don't look at this. Don't take pictures, which, you know, that's, that's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. So good job. But as far as I can tell, it's a longer travel habit, Habit LT. But I'm really looking forward to that because I feel like Cannondale right now kind of has a little hole in its line between the Habit, which I think is a really good bike and a somewhat underrated bike. I thought it was a pretty lively, fun 130 trail bike. I thought it was the best Cannondale suspension bike I'd ever ridden. 
And again, I think it's kind of underrated. So a bigger travel version of that, hopefully without the goofy AI offset in the rear end or any other Cannondale goofiness. God, you know, from the company that invented BB30, we now have threaded bottom brackets, holy cow. Been talking a lot about some kind of boutique-y high-end bikes. I'm gonna talk about something a little less expensive. Norco Fluid A1. Again, up at EWS Crankworks this summer, and I came across the Fluid in the Norco booth, and man, the, the A1 in this really beautiful green color, it was well-specced, it looked good, the angles, the geometry, the numbers all looked really good, and the price was good. You know, Norcos, I feel like they're kind of in that Kona range where they build thoughtfully specced bikes that are obviously built with mountain bikers in mind. Like, no b good parts, fair prices, nothing stupid about them. I feel like Norco builds that kind of bike, just honest, straightforward mountain bikes. This one just looked like an amazing bike for any rider. I mean, it was, you know, it's priced like a more mid-range bike, but there's nothing about this thing that looked like any rider couldn't rail the of it and just have a great time. It was just well done and sensible numbers for that work for, you know, going up and down and flat trails and a little bit of everything in between. You know, mid-travel bikes like that, like this Fluid, which is in that 130, 140 category for a fair price. And those kind of bikes really excite me, especially when you make them look really pretty. I mean, what's, there's nothing wrong with pretty bike, man. And then my final bike, very similar in a lot of ways, actually. The new Rift Zone from Marin. Marin has, for many years, been making these just kick-ass full suspension mountain bikes in like, you put it in kind of like the 1,000 to 3,000 zone, like in there, maybe a little more, uh, 3,500, I don't know. Prices are crazy these days. I don't know what anything is anymore. It's, you know, every time I go to a website, I'm like, oh, it costs this now, great. You know, it started off with a 27.5 bike and they were making these, just these killer bikes that rode really, really well. We like gave them editor's choice awards and everything because they were just like, damn, this is a great bike for someone who wants to go and really mountain bike, but doesn't want to spend stupid money. They've been building that bike for a while and it's it's been awesome. They've been involving this platform for a while. And the last one, last couple I've ridden, they've been really nice bikes. Revise it, a little bit more travel, a little, you know, a little better, you know, a little bit more update spec. I think a little bit longer fork, you know, a little slacker, the shorter seat tubes for longer travel droppers, all that kind of stuff. So just a really good series of updates. You know, I talked about the Habit, Candale Habit being a uh, underrated bike. I feel like these Marins, you know, the Rifty is another underrated bike, you know, just great riding, well thought out, good numbers, fair priced, aluminum, full suspension, fun machine. We need more bikes like that. Uh, I'm stoked when I see them like this Marin, like this Norco, the Norco Fluid I talked about earlier. More of those bikes. I ride a lot of bikes and I get to ride some, you know, I can, like right over there, there's a $15,000 bike. I get to ride that uh, and they're really nice. But when I get on like a $2,500, $3,500 aluminum bike, like a Rifty, I could not have this job anymore. This would be the bike I could pro maybe afford and I'd be stoked and I'd be happy. I wouldn't miss all those crazy high-end bikes because it's so good. And I'm just out here having a great time on a good mountain bike. As much as I am a bike snob and I get to ride crazy because I have this crazy job. Honestly, like those kind of bikes are the ones that excite me the most. The ones where I'm like, this is gonna serve the rider really well. And they didn't have to spend a stupid amount of money on it and they're gonna go out there and have a great time anywhere. Marin, keep building those kind of bikes. Norco, Kona, you know, brands that do that kind of stuff really well. Thank you for doing that. There are a couple of the bikes I'm super excited to ride in 2023. <coughs> All right. <coughs> hey everyone.